The Seton Miracles the most convincing case of weeping statues of the Virgin Mary in history. This book was written by Jim Carney, a parishioner at St. Elizabeth and Seton Catholic Church. Mr. Carney was an eyewitness to the extraordinary events. What follows is a brief introduction to the mysterious case of the weeping statues of Washington, D.C. You won't believe what happened at the church today, my wife, Pinky, said to me in a kind of offhand manner early in the evening on January 14, 1992. She seemed unusually subdued, but since she was, and is, the youth minister at St. Elizabeth and Seton Catholic Church, there were days when the challenges of her youthful constituents and other stresses in her ministry took a heavy toll. So, I was prepared to believe anything. But never in my wildest dreams would I have predicted what she was about to reveal. Father Jim has received the stigmata, bodily wounds replicating the five crucifixion wounds borne by Christ, and statues of the Blessed Virgin Mary are weeping at the church, she informed me quietly. It wasn't that I did not believe her, but she was right all the same. I was not prepared for that disclosure. In fact, I was thunderstruck. Father Jim Bruce, associate pastor, who was given a t-shirt by the Seas Youth Group emblazoned Father Flash for the speed with which he often said Mass, singled out by God for an honor accorded St. Francis of Assisi. It did not seem possible. Father Bruce, fourth-degree Knight of Columbus, who seemed even younger than his 37 years. It couldn't be. I pressed her for details. She had heard earlier that day from another staff member about the weeping and the stigmata and had immediately gone to the rectory to see Father Bruce. He explained to her that the weeping had begun with an Our Lady of Grace statue at his parents' house in Stafford on Thanksgiving Day the previous November. The stigmata came a month later on the day after Christmas, again at his parents' home, although the wounds did not fully appear on both sides of his wrists and in his side and feet until the days following. While he patiently explained these events to Pinky, more like a bystander himself than a center of divine attention, a small plastic Madonna statue which was resting on his credenza began to cry. Not that the small religious icon was racked with sobbing, of course, but water flowed copiously from the eyes and down the cheeks so that crying seemed the only appropriate term to describe what was clearly impossible for an inanimate, anhydrous object. Since that momentous disclosure in mid-January 1992, I have seen approximately two dozen religious icons composed variously of plastic, metal, ceramic, plaster, porcelain and fiberglass weep in the same way. I have held small Madonna statues in my hands and watched their eyes fill with tears which then rolled down their cheeks and puddled at the bases of the figures. I have seen as many as six of these little statues weeping simultaneously. Icons were seen weeping in the rectory, in the church in our home when Father Bruce came to dinner, even inside a glass-enclosed cabinet, and at numerous other locations. Stained and etched glass images of the Blessed Virgin Mary have shed tears, meaning as before that a clear liquid that certainly seemed to be water flowed from the eyes of the figures. Before it was over, dozens if not hundreds of statues and images, most of them representing the Blessed Virgin Mary, wept under the scrutiny of thousands of observers. The weeping has been captured on film by professional and amateur photographers alike, even showing up on the first television broadcast about it on March 6, 1992. Other strange occurrences took place, too, such as statues and rosaries changing colors. In one mystifying case, a small Fatima statue of Our Lady rotated its colors for nearly half an hour inside the Catholic Church before 20 to 30 witnesses. This occurred at least twice more on successive Saturdays and had happened many times before that. Several parishioners reported seeing the miracle of the sun, as has occurred at Medjugorje and other apparition sites, describing it in much the same way. Other parishioners saw strange, sometimes rotating, colors in the sky. They emphatically insist these were not rainbows and bore no resemblance to any rainbow they had ever seen. There have been whispered rumors of dramatic physical healings, at least two of which have been well documented. The events took place in the shadow of America's capital. St. Elizabeth and Seton Catholic Church is located in Lake Ridge, Virginia, a residential neighborhood which forms one of the many satellite communities supporting the employment needs of metropolitan Washington, D.C. 
It is about 25 miles from the city, due south down that commuter's nemesis, I-95. Of course this is not the first demonstration of weeping statues, nor has it been the last. This phenomenon has been widespread throughout the entire world in this century. But it seems safe to say that the quantity, variety and duration of weeping statues and other inexplicable phenomena which were associated with Father James Bruce were not only incomparably greater than any other similar display in history, but may actually have exceeded all of the others put together. Add to that the dramatic supernatural event of the stigmata being imposed upon a Catholic priest only the second time in history that has occurred and one can only conclude that God sent a virtual clarion call to humanity, certainly to America. We will consider hereafter what that clarion call, delivered through the Mother of God, might mean, in fact, what it certainly must mean. Our Lady is Calling God bless and thank you for watching Mystic Post TV.